Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be doing the mid year book freak out tag. I've done this, I think, for every year I've been on BookTube, so the link will be uh, down below for all my previous ones if you want to check those out. Before we get started in the video, I want to show off my shirt. Oop, it says take me, take me to not Hoth. And it has like a spaceship, moon, mountains. It's so stinking cute. A lovely subscriber of mine, Monica. Hi, Monica. She sent this my way. So thank you so much. This is so stinking cute. I got it in the mail yesterday and I just had to wear it in my videos. Cause like, I love it. I don't own any IPB clothes, like any merch with IPB. So like, this is amazing. Thank you, Monica. And so let's get started. All the questions will be down below as well. And I'm excited to talk about all the books that I've read so far this year. Question number one is the best book that you've read so far in 2022. So I have a few. I don't have a solid singular one yet, if that makes sense. I don't, I don't have that. I feel like in years past, I've always had like a singular one that I've loved. First is Broken Vow by Sophie Lark. I love this one, a mafia romance, a bodyguard romance with a grumpy heroine and a sunshine hero. Loved this. Um, it is book five in a series though, so please read the other books before getting to this one. One of my recent reads is The Taming of a Highlander by Elisa Braden. I loved this one. We have a scarred hero falling in love with the chatterbox of a woman and it is so cute. Again, it's the second in a series and you need to read book one, so please be aware, but I loved this one so much. And then I also loved Captive of the Horde King by Zoe Draven. I feel like I picked a book for each category. We have alien romance, historical, a contemporary. So like I I'm checking all the boxes here, okay? So Captive of the Horde King is an alien romance that I love. Gives me a lot of Dothraki from Game of Thrones vibes, like Khal Drogo vibes. A human woman gets taken by this um, alien Horde King and he makes her his queen. And oh my gosh, it's so good. And then one that goes outside of the box a little bit that I just love and will never stop thinking about is What Doesn't Kill You by Tessa Miller. This is a nonfiction memoir slash informational book about people with chronic illnesses and it is really good. Uh, you can check out my Goodreads review for all of the trigger warnings. I have them all listed there um, because this book does get pretty heavy and deep. But if you wanna know more about chronic illnesses and people who are chronically ill or you're chronically ill yourself and you want a book that you can relate to, pick this one up. It is so good. The audiobook is really great. The author, Tessa, narrates it herself. Next question is best sequel you've read so far in 2022. My answer will probably be like everybody else's, which is House of Sky and Breath. <laughs> um, this book, look how freaking big this is. I can't believe I read this. <laughs> um, I love Sergio Mass books and this book was epic. Epic to the 10th degree, especially with the ending. Like this sequel was amazing. I feel like book three is going to be even better and I'm so excited. Next is a new release you haven't read yet but want to. I have a few. For a few of these, I couldn't just pick one book, like a few of these questions. So um, first is Everything For You by Chloe Lees. Of course, I love the Bergman Brothers series. I love it. I'm just waiting for the audiobook to come in through Libby um, and I don't have a physical copy yet, but I love listening to the audiobook. So I'm just going to wait through the library to get it. Um, this is her fifth book in the Bergman Brothers series. Um, I believe this is a, a male male sports romance, if I'm not mistaken. And so I'm really excited. I love Chloe Lee's, her writing, her Bergman brother world sphere is just so addicting to read about. I also really want to read One for All by Lily Lanoff. This came out a few months ago. Um, this is actually a YA book, surprise. Um, but it's actually about a character with POTS, which is my chronic illness, which is the reason why I wanted to read it so badly. So Lily Lanoff has POTS herself, so it's own voices. And so I'm really excited to read this just because I have POTS. And so I love reading about characters who have POTS as well. Um, and this is like a Three Musketeer retelling, but with women instead of men. And then I also have not read Monroe by Chris Nicole yet. I know this came out in January and I still haven't read it yet. I own the audiobook. It's sitting in my Audible. I purchased it and everything. I haven't read it yet. I don't know why. Don't know why. I need to get to it. I just do. This is her recent book in the Immortals After Dark series, which is a paranormal romance series that is just fantastic. And then I also really want to read The Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert. I've been really looking forward to this and it came out a couple, like a month ago, I don't know. Um, but it's a monster romance that 
looks really, really, really fun to read. The next question is most anticipated release for the second half of 2022. I have three that I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna go in like publication time. Um, I think this video might be out already by the time the first one is out, I don't know. I'm filming this at the end of June. So um, for me, it's an anticipated release and it is A Curse of Blood and Stone by K.A. Tucker, the second book to A Fate of Wrath and Flame. I read this book last summer, the first book in the series, last summer and Buddy read it with Tori from Novel Life and it was so much fun to buddy read that with her. So I'm hoping we can buddy read book two together. Um, but this is a fantasy romance series. It just like is mind boggling mind-boggling i'm not even gonna tell you what it's about because like i think anything that i say for it can be a spoiler you just need to go in blind this the first book was amazing i loved it and i can't wait for book two and hopefully more romance is in book two and on october 18th is the well-awaited it starts with us by colleen hoover the sequel to it ends with us i'm not gonna tell you the couple is just in case you did not read it ends with us and i don't want to spoil anything for anybody but it's about the hinting of a couple at the end of it ends with us and i hope we get flashback scenes and everything that we want it just oh, it looks so good i can't wait for it to release and then on november 8th is raven unveiled by grace draven which is the third book in her fallen empire series i've been loving this series it's very underhyped like not a lot of people have read this series i love it i love it so much so I'm very much looking forward to this. Grace Driven is an amazing fantasy romance writer. Next is Biggest Disappointment. I can't pick just one. <laughs> First is Wrong Bad Red Guy by Katie Robert. I read this wanting to love it because I've loved Katie Robert's newer books. Um, this is one of the first books she's written and it was awful. Like it was so bad. Our heroine wants to seduce and get with her boss. And so she sneaks into his apartment at night, into his room at night with like no clothes on, like she's not wearing any clothes. And she sneaks into his bed and starts like kissing him and trying to get with him while he's asleep. And then she realizes that's not her boss, that's her boss's brother. I really don't like romances that happen because you do something to somebody when they are asleep and they don't know about what's going on. Like I get if you have like an arrangement beforehand, like yeah, girl, you can do anything in my sleep, I don't care do it like if you have that consent beforehand but like doing something to somebody in their sleep to seduce them is a big ick for me big ick and just the the whole the whole book was a big ick for me honestly apprentice in disguise by karen hawkins is another one that really disappointed me because i love this series so much this is uh, a novella a part of the duchess diaries series i've given almost every single book in the series five stars and this book is a measly two. I hate it. There were so many things wrong with it. You can go check out my Goodreads review for it because it was, I, I listed all the things that I hated about this book. Did not like it, which is sad because it was an Anastasia retelling and I love Anastasia retellings, but this book was bad. Biggest surprise, I have two here. We have Little Green Vines by Britt Andrews. I loved this. This, I just, it's a surprise for me, I think, because I just, downloaded it off of a whim not from a recommendation for any, from anybody and for a lot of the times for me i have really bad luck when it comes to picking out books on my own that are not recommended by other people like i normally rate them low but this one i just found off of kindle i was reading some monster romance novellas like in the middle of the night <laughs> just reading a bunch at once and then i finished one and this one was in the recommended after you finish like a kindle book like a thing pops up that says maybe you should read this one next you know and so that one popped up and i was like "Ooh, what's this and i found it it's a sapphic monster romance and i'm like "Ooh, i never read one of those so let's get it and it was so fun it's so hot i loved it and then another one is her mate's secret baby by grace goodwin this is one of her books in her interstellar bride program i think this one is surprising for me just because um when this book i think it's like book number eight in the series possibly and at that point like the plot has been reused constantly in this alien romance series and i was kind of over it and then this one kind of like surprised me because it went against the grain and the plot in here was very different from the other alien romances in this series our heroine um, get smashed with this hero. They really hit it off. They do the do. They have a fun night together. That's like their honeymoon, you know, like their wedding night. And then their camp gets raided and attacked. And to save her, one of the guards who's protecting her sends her back to Earth without um, her alien husband like knowing. Um, and so he thinks she's dead because the guard was killed and he can't tell. He can't tell his his ruler like, hey, 
I sent your woman back to earth to save her. Like he doesn't know where his woman went, where his wife went. And so he thinks she's dead. And so she gets sent back to earth and she's waiting for so long for this, her love of her life to come back to her that she just met though. She finds out she's pregnant. There's also a time difference between these two planets. So the hero, it takes, he gets captured by the aliens who like raided their camp. And so he's been captured for like a week. And then he finally realizes that his mate is not dead. And he goes and finds her just to realize the time difference is different. It's been years on earth and only a week on his planet. Like this one is so good. Like I love this one, a part of the series. It's one of my favorite from Grace Goodwin. Newest favorite author, I have three. First is Lila Faye. I've read almost her complete backlist in 2022. She's a monster romance writer. Um, she wrote one of my favorite monster books, uh, which is The Orc's Bride. I loved it so much. I've been loving Zoe Draven. I've only read two of her books, but like, I feel like she's gonna be an all-time author for me. She's the one who wrote uh, Captive of the Horde King. I've read the first two books in that series, loved it. Also, A.G. Wilde is another alien romance author that I've been loving this year. I discovered her this year. I've read like seven of her books now, love them. Um, and then I've also been loving Elisa Brayden, a new historical romance author. Again, I've only read two of her books, but like, I feel like I'm gonna love them, like the rest of them, because my friends do, so. Next is newest fictional crush. I would say Raylan for Broken Vow. I love him so much. I want my own Raylan. I, I, I do, I love him a lot. He's a sweet cowboy hero who will do anything for his woman. Oh, I love that. And then also Agacor from The Half Orcs Maiden Bride by Ruby Dixon. Yes, my fictional crush is an orc. <laughs> but like his personality and the way that he treats Yolanthe is just like, goals complete goals i love him and how sweet and attentive and atten attentive yes <laughs> new favorite character would have to be i have two um first is jade from choosing theo i love her this is an alien romance if you didn't know and jade is a curvy woman who wants what she wants and isn't afraid to get it and she's been a she's a human woman who's been put on this alien planet and is scared to death but will honestly do anything to keep her happiness and it is so cute i love jade and how much she loves theo and i also really loved frankie from not my type um she was just so amazing i loved her because she has that podcast the um I forget the name of it, but it's like the podcast where she talks about disability awareness and access and everything, including intimacy with somebody who is disabled. And so I loved that. I love her and just like everything that she stood for and talked about and how confident she was. I loved that. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry. We have House of Sky and Breath made me cry. Okay. And then this book made me sob uncontrollably. What doesn't kill you? Like these two books they wrecked me for various reasons. Question 11 is a book that made you happy. Um, for this, I have uh, two books by Cara Bastone. I read Sweet Talk and I read Seatmate by her and I loved these so much. They are Audible Plus books, Audible Originals with full cast narration, background noise, ambiance noise, everything. They're just short little novellas, like contemporary romances that have like no steam in them because like they're all about these people like connecting for the first time. They're just so cute. I love Sweet Talk a little bit more than Seatmate, but they were just so, so good. They made me so happy too. Like I was constantly smiling and laughing while listening to these books. Cara Bastone is, is an amazing writer. You need to pick her books up. And then I also loved Wrapped Up in You by Talia Hibbert. This book made me smile so, so much. We have a childhood friends to lovers romance in here. And these two have been pining over each other for quite a long time, but for various reasons, they weren't able to admit their feelings. And they finally do during Christmas time at um, our heroine's grandmother's house. And her grandmother is a hoot and a half. I love her. She owns like 20 cats. And one scene that made me laugh so hard is there's like a snowstorm. They're all stuck in this house. And one of the cats gets out and she's pregnant. And the, the couple in here have to go find this cat out in the snow. And she's giving birth in the snow during a snowstorm. And it is just so funny. I love this one. Question number 12 is favorite book to movie adaptation you've seen so far this year. The only one I've seen is of course, season two of Bridgerton. I read The Viscount Who Loved Me earlier this year after watching the show. I will say I prefer the book um, just cause like the show dragged on way too long. And like, it was so not satisfying with the end with like no Kate and Anthony scenes. Like 
like them to finally together, you know, like it's so unsatisfying. Um, and so I loved the book a little bit more, but I get why the show changed it because they probably didn't want two seasons back to back of like um, the ruined heroine trope, you know? It's like, I liked the show. Like it was good, but not as good as the book. And then one that I haven't seen yet is The Summer I Turned Pretty TV show by Jenny Han. Um, I grew up on The Summer I Turned Pretty trilogy. I reread them over and over and over and over again. <laughs> um, I love that trilogy. Book three can suck it though. Hate the ending of book three, honestly. Um, just because the person that I wanted to be endgame was not endgame. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't wanna spoil it for anybody. But like, that's why I'm nervous to watch the show because like, I don't wanna watch her fall for the guy who's endgame. Like it doesn't, <laughs> like I don't wanna watch it. I don't even know what's in the show. So, um, because in the whole series, she's bouncing back and forth between the brothers. So yeah. Question number 13 is favorite review you've written this year. Um, I don't have like a favorite review, honestly, like a glowing review for like a book that I loved. I do have a favorite review that made me laugh because of like how ridiculous this book was and what I wrote in the review. So The Duke I Once Knew by Olivia Drake was a book that I DNF'd, didn't finish. in during the historical romance readathon, I hated it. DNF'd it so bad. And I talked about it in the review why and <laughs> I loved ranting about it, honestly. It was so fun. Like, it's so good. You can go read it if you want to. <laughs> Question 14 is most beautiful book you bought this year or received this year. Um, so I'll do one that I bought and one that I received. So one that I bought was during my Atlanta trip. We have Comanche Moon by Anita Mills. Because of this step back, it is so beautiful. I love it. Um, and then one that was sent to me by Hello Lovely Box. You can use my code down below to get boxes from them. I believe it's Ava15. You can use it as a discount, but this book is honestly stunning to me. I love it. This is the exclusive edition of Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling. I love this book. This is the only book that I've read by Gianna Darling. <laughs> I know don't hate me for skipping to book two, but I had to do it. I had to. It appealed to me way more than book one, um, but it is just so beautiful what they did. Oh, it's upside down. What they did with this exclusive edition was just stunning. And then there's also an art print that came with it and it came signed. Like, I love this book so much. And like Hello Lovely Box did an amazing job with this cover. And the last question, question number 15 is books you want to read by the end of the year. Um, so of course we have all the books on my five star prediction video. I'll link that down below if you want to check it out. There's like 11 books on that list. I've only read like four of them. I need to get going, honestly. Then I really want to read Love Flushed by Evie Mitchell. Um, I know that ha this has great um, autoimmune disease rep, I'm pretty sure, um, or disability rep, I can't remember off the top of my head what our heroine has, um, but it's some, it's either ulcerative colitis or IBS, I don't remember, um, or Crohn's disease. I don't know. Don't count me on that, I don't know, but I know that has great rep in here. Um, and, I've lo and I really loved Not My Type by Evie Mitchell, so. Um, and then I really want to read real by kennedy ryan because all my friends love it and i just i haven't read it yet because like i'm scared of getting my heart broken and i feel like this book could break my heart honestly it just looks so good like look how beautiful this cover is by the way it is stunning i've never read a kennedy ryan book either so i'm just scared to have my heart broken by miss kennedy ryan but i know that she puts your heart back together which is good but like i don't know if i'm ready for this emotional turmoil and then lastly i specifically want to read more Regine Abel books, uh, specifically her Prime Mating Agency series, like the rest of it. I only read book one, I Married a Lizard Man, I've only read book one, but I wanna read the rest of them. Um, I have the second book downloaded on my Kindle, but I just wanna read more Regine Abel because I feel like I would love all of her books, honestly. But anyways, there you have it. That was the mid-year book freak out tag. Let me know down below if you made this video. I'd love to watch it. And also let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me um, any kind of space related emoji because of my shirt. <laughs> but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day.